Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party. remain standing for the presentation of our colors, the playing of our national anthem by the Air Force Band of the West, and the invocation. Chaplain Major Leif Espeland will now deliver the invocation. Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, it is indeed appropriate for us to gather here today at the Fingston Reception Center at JBSA Lackland, the gateway to the Air Force. Just as every enlisted member begins his or her Air Force life by walking through these halls, so too does the life of the AFI MSC officially commence here today. Lord, we ask your blessing upon this endeavor. Installation and mission support is our name. It is our solemn duty. The airmen who are now called to resource what the force does on behalf of our nation cannot miss the target. And so we are profoundly grateful for the leaders who accept this charge. General Wolfenbarger's choices of Major General Carter and 
Chief Lugo Santiago have the talent, the track record, and tenacity to lead this new organization. They have the common sight picture of leaders who have engaged in turning civilians into war-fighting airmen. They know the stakes are so high as to defy overstatement. So as they lead, may all in their charge match their steadfast commitment. This new organization requires you, Lord, the author and giver of life, to guide us through the many tasks before us as the AFI MSC takes flight. May we always be mindful of your guiding providence and grace as we serve the greatest Air Force in the world. Amen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. At this time, we would like to take a moment to recognize and welcome some of the many distinguished visitors in attendance with us today. Please hold your applause until all have been recognized. The Commander, Air Force Materiel Command, General Janet C. Wolfenbarger, and her Command Chief, Chief Master Sergeant Michael Warner. The Incoming Commander, Air Force Installation and Mission Support Center, Major General Teresa C. Carter, and her Command Chief, Chief Master Sergeant Jose Lugo Santiago. From Headquarters, United States Air Force, the Assistant, Deputy for Logistics, Engineering, and Force Protection, Mr. Timothy Bridges. The former Vice Commander, Air Education and Training Command, Lieutenant General Retired, Douglas H. Owens. The Vice Commander, Air Education and Training Command, Major General Leonard A. Patrick, his wife Lynn, and the Command Chief, Chief Master Sergeant Gerardo Tapia. Representing the United States Army, the Deputy Commanding General and Chief of Staff, Headquarters Installation Management Command, Major General LaWarren V. Patterson and his Command Sergeant, Command Sergeant Major Jeffrey S. Hartless. And although time does not permit us to recognize all of our distinguished guests, senior leaders, friends, and colleagues individually, we thank you for taking time out of your schedules to join us at today's ceremony. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Commander, Air Force Materiel Command, General Janet C. Wolfenbarger. Well, thank you. It is absolutely my pleasure to be here today. I'd like to start by welcoming all of our community leaders, our senior leaders, both present and past, our colleagues, coworkers, family members, and friends who are here today. We are so pleased to have all of you attend this ceremony, which is all about activating a center and putting General T.C. Carter in as the commander of that new center. Today's ceremonial actions are part of a larger strategic initiative for our Air Force to reduce operating costs and to provide overall mission efficiencies. The Air Force has entrusted Air Force Material Command with the responsibility of centralizing the management, the resourcing, and reach back for installation and mission support activities covering all of the Air Force's 77 major installations. Air Force Material Command as the core function lead for Agile Combat Support is responsible for a broad range of activities spanning all major commands related to fielding, basing, protecting, supporting, and sustaining combat capabilities. When the idea for the Air Force Installation and Mission Support Center was born, it was a natural fit to align it under Air Force Material Command as we already had success working Agile Combat Support issues across multiple commands and were well versed in those relationships. As a result, Air Force Material Command gained our sixth center and corresponding mission set with the establishment of the provisional Air Force Installation and Mission Support Center last year, which today will transition to permanent status. This new construct simplifies and reduces the Air Force's major command overhead structure in the installation and mission support functional areas and expands on Air Force Material Command's already vast Agile Combat Support mission. 
As part of this effort, last October, we realigned 179 officers, 402 enlisted members, and 2,196 civilians assigned to the six field operating agencies, the FOAs, that were executing missions that directly contribute to installation of mission support across the Air Force. Those six agencies are now PSU's primary subordinate units within Air Force Material Command, and I'm going to list them all because I'm going to talk about each one of them. They are the Air Force Services Activity, the Air Force Security Forces Center, the Air Force Civil Engineer Center, the Air Force Installation Contracting Agency, the Air Force Financial Management Center of Expertise, and the Air Force Financial Services Center. So all of those units were aligned under Air Force Material Command as of the 1st of October 2014 and subsequently assigned to Air Force IMSC on the 6th of April, just about a month ago in 2015. And we are now also, in addition to the alignment of those organizational entities, in the process of standing up the center itself. 350 strong as we're in the midst of hiring for and targeting by the end of September to complete those hiring actions and in, uh, in fully um, standing up the center itself. So before we actually talk about activating the new center, I thought I'd spend a few minutes reflecting on some of the history and heritage of those PSUs, those primary subordinate units that comprise this new center. I'm going to talk about each one of them. I'll start uh, with those that are um, assigned right here, aligned right here at, uh, at, at Joint Base San Antonio. So I'll start with the Air Force Services Activity. You know, that entity was initially established in 1947 when we were formed as an Air Force. It was then the Air Force, it was then the Morale, Welfare, and Recreation MWR operation. And now, clearly, it has gone through several changes since 1947. In February of 1991, the Air Force Morale, Welfare, and Recreation Center was activated at Randolph Air Force Base here in Texas, and then redesignated as the Morale, Wel Welfare, and Recreation uh, Agency later that year in August. In 1992, the MWR and services merged becoming what would later be known as the Headquarters Air Force Services Agency in 1994. And then there was another merger in 2012 with the Air Force Personnel Center and the Air Force Manpower Agency. Uh, and, and as a result of that merger, uh, this organization, this entity, became the Services Directorate under the Air Force Personnel Center. And at that time, the Headquarters Air Force Services Agency was inactivated. So that takes us up to October of last year when we realigned that work and now called it the Air Force's Services Activity in October of 2014 as part of the stand-up of Air Force IMSC. The Air Force Services Activity executes the mission of delivering services programs and activities to build and sustain ready and resilient airmen and families by providing programs for child care and youth activities, libraries, food, fitness, and lodging. A great heritage. One down, five to go. The next one I'll talk about is the Air Force Security Forces Center. It was established as the Air Force Office of Security Police on the 1st of September, 1979, then redesignated as the Air Force Security Police Agency on the 1st of August, 1991, and then again as the Air Force Security Forces Center on the 17th of, May, of March, 1997. It was later that year that the Air Force Security Forces Center moved from Kirtland Air Force Base, its home at that time, uh, to its present location here in Joint Base San Antonio. And then that center was realigned as well on October 14th of last year with the stand-up of our Air Force IMSC. The Air Force Security Forces Center's mission is to deliver and execute programs that train, equip, advance, and sustain full spectrum protection and ground combat capabilities to ensure U.S. air power freedom of maneuver in all environments to include protecting our United States Air Force's nuclear deterrent capability. The third PSU that I wanted to talk about is the Air Force Civil Engineer Center. And I gotta tell you, this one's a little bit more complex. All of you folks from AFCAC will know this, right? So the roots of AFCAC trace back to three then existing forward or field operating agencies, the Air Force Center of, for Engineering and the Environment, FC, the Air Force Civil Engineer Support Center, FCSA, and the Air Force Real Property Agency, AFRIPA. 
So I'm going to talk about each one of those because they all have heritage and tradition associated with them. So the first of those field operating agencies, the Air Force Center for Engineering and the Environment, was activated in November of 1991 at Brooks Air Force Base here in the San Antonio area. In October of 2007, the center officially assumed management of the Air Force's military construction, family housing military construction, and environmental restoration account programs. And in 2010, the Air Force Center for Engineering and Environment officially moved then from Brooks to Lackland Air Force Base. The second of those three FOAs that make up AFCEC, the Air Force Civil Engineer Support Center, began as the Civil Engineer Construction Operations Group at my home base at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio in 1966. Two years later, the group transitioned to the new Air Force Civil Engineering Center, which in 1972 moved to Tyndall Air Force Base. In 1977, the Air Force Engineering and Services Agency was formed after the Air Force combined, now for the first time, Civil Engineering and Services. This agency had its headquarters at Kelly Air Force Base here in San Antonio. Then, in 1978, the Air Force Engineering and Services Center was activated at Tyndall Air Force Base, Florida. The name of the organization changed a few times, was the Air Force Civil Engineering Support Agency in August of 1991, and later became the Air Force Civil Engineer Support Agency in 1994. All right, the third of those FOAs that make up AFCEC, the Air Force Real Property Agency. It goes back to 15 November 1991, and the creation of the then Air Force Base Disposal Agency. In 1993, the agency was renamed the Air Force Base Conversion Agency. The Secretary of the Air Force consolidated the Air Force Base Conversion Agency and the Air Force Real Estate Division to form the Air Force Real Property Agency on October 16th of 2002. The division managed real property acquisition and disposal for active Air Force installations worldwide. And in 2009, the Air Force Real Property Agency was moved from the Pentagon right here to Joint Base San Antonio. Well, it was in October of 2012, only two years before the realignment to Air Force IMSC, that those three FOAs, field operating agencies, merged into today's Air Force Civil Engineer Center, and of course located right here, Joint Base San Antonio. The mission of the Air Force Civil Engineer Center is to provide civil engineering services and enterprise life cycle leadership to installations that enable the warfighter. All right, up next. Our fourth PSU, the Air Force Installation Contracting Agency, it was first activated as the Air Force Contract Management Division in 1964 at the Los Angeles Air Force Annex at that time, before moving to Kirtland Air Force Base in 1972 and ultimately being deactivated in 1990. So you have to fast forward 20 years when that organization was redesignated and activated as the Enterprise Sourcing Group in October of 2010 at its present location, which is Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio, where it was originally aligned under Air Force Material Command. It was redesignated as the Air Force Installation Contracting Agency in October of 2013 and aligned under the Pentagon uh, as part of the Assistant Secretary of the Air Force for Acquisition Organization. Well, that center then returned home, I like to say, to Air Force Material Command last October as well in 2014 with the stand-up of the Air Force IMSC. The Air Force Installation Contracting Agency's mission is to provide responsive enterprise contracting solutions to enable efficient and effective mission and installation operations. All right, we're on number five, five of six. And that's our Air Force Financial Management Center of Expertise. That center is located in Denver, Colorado. It achieved its IOC and was assigned under the Air Force Cost Analysis Agency on the 16th of April in 2006, so a newer organization. And then that center was realigned as well in October of last year uh, as part of our stand-up. That center, the Center of Expertise's mission, is to provide expert, on-demand, specialized analysis for decision support to Air Force installations and major commands. And last, but certainly not least, the Air Force Financial Services Center. It was established even a year later in May of 2007 at Ellsworth Air Force Base in South Dakota and assigned to the Financial Management Organization at the, at the Pentagon. That center also was then realigned just last October as we stood up the Air Force IMSC. That center's mission is to pay travel claims with excellence and deliver responsive customer support 
to financial services offices worldwide. It was important to me to go through some of that history because I think, as you can readily tell, those various organizations have had a profound history of outstanding service that has benefited our Air Force and our nation. To all of you here who are a part of that history and to all of you who are presently adding to and enriching that history, I say thank you. As these units combined under the center leadership of the Air Force Installation and Mission Support Center, I am confident that they will continue to add to the heritage and history of their new parent organization. So as part of the activation ceremony today for that parent organization, you will witness the unfurling of the provisional center flag signifying the birth of the new center. You know, from the times of the Roman legions, various standards were carried by the military units to identify them to their commander and to the members of the unit. Over time, these evolved into organizational flags that were unique to each unit. And that practice of carrying colors into battle continued actually throughout the American Civil War. Organizational flags also play a crucial role in the appointment of commanders as the ceremony serves to visually represent the authority that is entrusted to the new commander. Each of Air Force Material Command's centers is authorized to display a unique organizational flag with a shield symbolizing the center's mission. The flag that will be used today for the activation of the Air Force Installation and Mission Support Center stands in for the flag that will ultimately be displayed with that unique shield and symbol of Air Force IMSC, a work that is in progress and getting close to fruition, I understand. Well, now that I have talked about the importance of this center activation, I'd like to spend a little bit of time telling you why Major General Carter is the perfect person to lead this new organization. I knew last March when the Air Force named Major General Carter as my special assistant at the time that we had the right person to lead not only this new center, but really, when you think about this, TC, the entire Air Force through this large, strategic, historic, reorganizational effort. TC has prepared and laid the foundation for Air Force IMSC and then provided critical leadership as the provisional commander using a collaborative, creative, hands-on approach to work through the details for this new organization. As the very first Air Force IMSC commander, General Carter has the immense responsibility to lead an organization that provides program management, resourcing, and support activities in key areas previously provided by 10 major commands, two direct reporting units, and those six field operating agencies that we just highlighted that are now PSUs. Air Force IMSC's capabilities include security forces, civil engineering, base communications, logistics readiness, installation ministry programs, services, operational contracting, and financial management. The centralized management of installation support capabilities at Air Force IMSC is intended to ensure every installation receives an equal standard of support and service based on Air Force priorities. That is a huge undertaking. TC will be in a position to advocate for core mission, to cross-flow best practices, to balance workload, and to present a single face to all customers, installations, and MAGCOMs alike. So why TC? TC's nearly 30 years of service as an engineer, program manager, and flight squadron group and two times wing commander have given her a very clear vision on the leadership required for such a job. Her previous experience at many levels within the installation and mission support arena has also prepared her well for this new role. She most recently served as our Air Force's top civil engineer at the Pentagon 
and she is very familiar with the people and the corporate processes which will have sweeping impacts on making Air Force IMSC run efficiently. Major General Carter has distinguished herself throughout her career. She was named the 1997 Air Force Senior Civil Engineer Manager of the Year. And she received the 2003 Award for Excellence in Logistics Research and Writing from DLA, the Defense Logistics Agency. She's also an esteemed alumna from Purdue University, where she has been recognized in a number of capacities. She was named as one of five 2010 Outstanding Industrial Engineering alumna. She was chosen for the university's ROTC Hall of Fame in 2011. And she was one of 10 selected for the 2013 Distinguished Engineering Alumna Recognition. I think for perhaps the best understanding of why TC is the perfect choice for this prestigious Air Force position, we can look really at her previous experience here as the commander of the 502nd Air Base Wing and Joint Base San Antonio, the largest joint base in the Department of Defense. TC took command less than a year after the 502nd reached FOC and was instrumental in leading this base and city through the growing pains associated with such a tremendous reorganizational undertaking. By successfully leading this effort, she earned an invaluable amount of knowledge and experience which can be leveraged, and I'm sure she will, as she goes about executing the same kind of a large reorganizational effort for Air Force IMSC. From basic industrial engineering to commanding an air base wing, to working installation and mission support at the highest levels, General Carter understands the complexities of this work and contributes the perfect mix of experience and leadership to make this center successful. TC, I am so proud to be giving you the flag today as the first commander of the Air Force Installation and Mission Support Center. I know without a doubt that you will cement a rock-solid foundation ensuring the success of this historic reorganization for Air Force Material Command and for our United States Air Force. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, the Air Force Installation and Mission Support Center flag will now be unfurled marking the center's activation. Attention to orders. Special order number Golf Alpha 13, activating Air Force Installation and Mission Support Center with Major General Teresa C. Carter commanding. By order of the, of the Chief of Staff, United States Air Force, effective 6 April 2015. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commander, Air Force Installation and Mission Support Center, Major General Teresa C. Carter. Wow, uh, what a great day. And I would tell you, uh, thank you so much to each and every one of you for joining us this afternoon. Uh, it is great to see so many familiar faces here uh, back in San Antonio, uh, and I'm especially pleased that we have elected officials, civic leaders, uh, and many senior leaders here today, many of whom with, uh, I had the pleasure of working with during my tour as a JBSA commander. It is absolutely great to be back in Military City, USA, though I must admit, on 29 May, 
when I handed or you know reluctantly gave the flag to General Rice uh, for the 502nd and he gave it to a great leader in Bob Labruda. I never managed, imagined the Air Force would give me a chance to come back here, uh, but I couldn't think of a better place to come home to and come back to this than San Antonio. As General Wolfenbarger mentioned, reorganizations are part of our history as an Air Force. And I'd argue that the desire to change is absolutely in our DNA as airmen. In fact, our current Air Force vision says, we're powered by airmen and fueled by innovation. We're constantly striving to find new and better ways to deliver airspace and cyberspace power. While this organization was driven by necessity and fiscal reality, creation of the Air Force IMSC also presents us with a unique opportunity to think differently about how we deliver installation and mission support capabilities, both at home and abroad. We can't fly, fight, and win without our installations. These combat platforms are absolutely integral to our ability as an Air Force to launch and recover sorties, control satellites, and defend our networks against cyber attacks. Now, while change may be in our DNA, that doesn't mean a reorganization of this magnitude is easy. On the contrary, we need only look as far as our sister services to appreciate the enormity of the challenge and recognize that it's going to take several years for this to take hold and take root. My special thanks to Major General Patterson and his team from the Army's Installation Management Command uh, for joining us today. We sincerely appreciate the partnership and the feedback and the lessons learned that your team has shared with us. Uh, and we've done similar things with the Navy and the Marine Corps. And I personally look forward to continuing the partnership here in San Antonio as we go forward and, and stand up the organization. Now, as General Wolfenbarger mentioned, the ceremony today recognizes the formal activation of the center. We're still at the very early stages of building the organization. Over the next year and a half, we're going to stand up the organization, hire the permanent staff, and establish the necessary processes and procedures to deliver resources and support to commanders. We'll work side by side with the staffs at the major commands as we transition capabilities and workload over the next six months and prepare to fully accept resourcing responsibilities on the 1st of October this year. We expect to reach initial operating capability later this summer and expect to hit full operating capability 1 October 2016. Once we stand it up, we need to stabilize. As we've learned from other Air Force reorganizations, from our Army counterparts in MCOM, the Navy Installation Command, and others, it's important to continually assess what's working, what isn't, and what, perhaps most importantly, quickly made adjustments when we find out something's not working as we expected. We must routinely receive feedback from commanders and assess how we can better support their needs. Finally, once we've stood the organization up and stabilized it, we need to right-size it as we fully integrate the six primary subordinate units you heard General Wolfenbarger speak of, together with the headquarters and the detachments, and further look at streamlining to deliver these capabilities from the perspective of the commanders who need them most. One of the things I've had the fortune of learning throughout my career is that the key to success is trust. You don't have to own the organization providing support, but you need, do need to trust that it will deliver what you need, where and when you need it, in the quality and quantity required to get your mission done. Trust must be earned hour by hour and day by day through our words and through our actions. As General Schwartz used to say when he commanded United States Transportation Command, promise made, promise kept. I also recognize, recognize it's difficult to trust an organization that's yet to be established and only exists on paper and oftentimes in my head because I haven't communicated it to anybody, or to trust that the processes that are yet to be tested are going to survive under the stress and strain of real-world scenarios uh, and conditions. My commitment to our installation commanders, our major command commanders, and our senior leaders is that we'll never forget the mission comes first. Our mission is supporting commanders, and our focus is your success. Despite the enormity of the challenge, you might ask me, why are you confident this is going to work? 
While I'm absolutely confident that we can make it work and provide su the support required in the field, because of the people who've had a huge part in helping get us to the point we are today. I told General Wolfenbarger before he walked in, I feel like we've run a marathon, maybe just, okay, I, I count that as crossing the finish line, but there's two more marathons yet to go and you don't get to sit down and wait. Now, how do, who helped us get there? Um, some phenomenal people. So if you'll bear with me, I need to give them a shout out here because again, they did some, some awesome work. General Wolfenbarger said back in March I had the opportunity to transition from being the Air Force civil engineer to her special assistant. And we had a very, very small team of people that was working this effort, and many of them on a part-time basis. But a couple deserve special recognition. Colonel Steve Blamar, uh, now Colonel retired, and a new member of the SES Corps, Mr. Ed Oshiba, Ms. Lynn Eviston, my exec, Captain Sean Zabriskie, uh, from the AFMC staff, uh, Tammy Lyons, Donna McManus, Dr. Todd Four, and the rest of the team that really provided the heavy lifting to get us to the point of being able to establish a provisional center uh, in August. That provisional team was made up of 60 people who were nominated by their major command, and their reward was to spend uh, an extended TDY at Joint Base Andrews for the past six to eight months, depending on the person, working to establish uh, the basis for this center. And they were very small, oftentimes only five to six per functional area. Uh, but some deserve, again, a special shout out. My executive director, Ms. Carolyn Gleason, Colonel Brian Duffy, my vice, uh, Kurt Burgo, uh, my director of staff, my wingman from Joint Base San Antonio. I couldn't be more pleased to have Chief uh, Lugo Santiago back on the team. Uh, great exec and Captain Jake Botello. And then we had functional leads from a variety of career fields. From CE, Mr. Greg Cummings, Services, Mike Benson, our XP team, Mr. Vince Gasway, uh, Jack of all trades, Chris Marchiori, uh, also our XP team, Darlene Dawkins, Dawkins, and then a series of colonels. Leading our personnel effort, Rob Snodgrass, Security Forces, Paul Casuda, Communications, Dick Palmieri, Logistics Readiness, Bull Turnus, our uh, legal advisor, SJA, Marlisa Scott, Public Affairs, Cheryl Law, and Chaplain Kelvin Gardner. Plus two lieutenant colonels who I tell you were really fighting above their weight class. Uh, lieutenant Colonel Mike Bennett leading the FM team and Lieutenant Colonel Latif Heinsen leading the contracting team. Again, I couldn't be more proud of the work that they have done. Some have now gone back to their parent organization, but they provided a great foundation. Our six PSU commanders and directors, Joe Shabika, Mike Halloran, Gary Galano, Colonels Chris Bargery, Mark Piccolo, and Mark Baird, as well as our new detachment commanders. These six organizations, six PSUs, have done a great job. General Wolfenbarger laid it out well. They've been transforming for decades, and they've been good at telling us what lessons they've learned and help us going forward. While our detachments, co-located with the major commands, are gonna provide a key source of continuity and a depth of knowledge that as the headquarters is in the midst of standing up, we can't replace, and they're gonna be an incredible part of the team. We've also had hundreds of action officers from around the Air Force at all levels, at the Pentagon, at the major command, and at the installation level, who have been part of business process reengineering events, looking at new ways of delivering these capabilities. And I have to tell you, I'm energized and excited every time I take an out brief from these teams. I felt like I was back in General Labruda's job on Friday because I had the JBSA tour. I was all over the city taking out briefs. To a person, they say, you know, I wasn't quite sure what I was getting into. But at the end of the event, they are some of our most committed and passionate believers in what we're trying to do. And that gives me uh, great hope for the future. We've also had tremendous advice and counsel from our major commands and senior leaders. Tim Bridges here representing the senior leaders at the Pentagon. Tim, thanks so much for being here. And please pass on my personal thanks uh, to your counterparts when you get back to the building. I know you'll probably try and stay here as long as you can before returning to DC, but when you get back, please express my thanks. And we have uh, Major General Len Patrick, his wife Lynn, and Chief Tapia here from AETC. Um, not only being representatives of General Rand, but I look at, at this team as representing all of the major command senior leaders and senior enlisted leaders. Uh, and we absolutely can't succeed without your support and your input. 
And then, ma'am, finally, your staff at AFMC, all your directors and deputies, uh, two vice commanders, Lieutenant General Andy Bush and currently Major General Brent Baker, uh, your exec director, Mr. Gill, uh, and you personally have, have just been phenomenal in providing support. Uh, and it's something we're going to continue to rely on going forward. So as I reflected this morning, and really over the past few days, about how much is done to get us to this point, um, it is pretty incredible at the progress that's been made. Uh, I also was reminded of, of a quote that uh, came from President Theodore Roosevelt. And he said, it's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust, sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes up short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms and the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at best knows that in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. And I could see, as I looked up, I could see smiles and head nods from the provisional team and the rest of the family out there, uh, because I'm sure they were reliving many moments where we celebrated a small victory and took a step or two forward, only to have a penalty flag thrown on the field and take two, 10, or 20 steps or yards back. But every time, they made me very proud. They got up, dusted themselves off, and kept pressing forward. You inspire me with your resilience. I'm incredibly proud of the work you've done and excited to watch you write a new chapter in Air Force history. And I am both humbled and honored to be here today accepting the responsibility to lead and establish this organization and responsible for representing the hundreds of men and women who've made this possible. General Wolfenbarger, I sincerely appreciate the trust and confidence you, Secretary James, and General Welsh had in me and for affording me this once in a career opportunity. It's easily, I thought JBSA was hard. <laughs> this is the most complex and challenging job I've ever had, but at the same time, perhaps the most rewarding. When I left my job as the Air Force Civil Engineer last year, the staff presented me with a farewell gift that included the following quote from Winston Churchill. To each there comes in their lifetime a special moment when they are figuratively tapped on the shoulder and offered the chance to do a very special thing, unique to them and fitted to their talents. What a tragedy if that moment finds them unprepared or unqualified for that which could have been their finest hour. Now after I had a big lump in my throat and a gulp, I, I, I gotta tell you, it took my breath away because the thought that went through my mind was, holy cow, I sure hope I'm up to that. Um, and that I truly am prepared to tackle a problem of this magnitude. And I even hesitated using that today because today's event is not about me. It's about the organization that we're building from the ground up. Or I could say the airplane we're building while we're flying it, because we've used that analogy quite a bit. However, I ultimately decided, decided to use it for two reasons. One, to thank the many people throughout my career who've mentored me, pushed me, and supported me. Leaders like Lieutenant General Retired Doug Owens, who is just one of many who could be, or unfortunately couldn't be here today, who just have played a huge role in any success that I've had in my career. I'm as prepared as I can be, thanks to their continued support and confidence. Second, I've used this I think every time I've taken command, I have been absolutely blessed to be at the right place at the right time with the right people throughout my career, and this assignment is no different. Churchill's quote applies perhaps even more to the greater AFIMSC team. The headquarters staff that we've hired and those coming in, our PSU team and our detachments. Your Air Force is tapping you on the shoulder. This is your moment, and I know you're ready. Make this your finest hour, and in doing so, we'll provide our Air Force an organization that's effective, efficient, responsive, and focused on supporting commanders. Finally, I'd like to thank everybody who helped make today's ceremony possible. 
our project officer, Lieutenant Colonel Matt Or Orlovsky from the Air Force Services Activity and his team, our narrator, Master Sergeant Sandy Morris from the Air Force Security Forces Center, Mr. Jim Steele, the facility manager for this beautiful venue, and uh, Colonel Edwards, thanks to you and the 37th Training Wing team for making this available for us. Ms. Vicki Lyles from AFMC Protocol, uh, 502nd and Joint Base San Antonio Protocol, Mr. Rocky Flores and Mr. Sean Patterson. Uh, the third combat, camera, uh, third combat Camera Squadron team that is live streaming this event so that our team members around the world can participate. And our very own provisional team, Jack of All Trades, Second Lieutenant Grant Williams from the Air Force Services Activity. You all did an amazing job. I thank you all sincerely for being here today. I look forward to working with all of you and certainly renewing old friendships here in Alamo City and Military City, USA. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on this historic day for the United States Air Force, Air Force Material Command, and Air Force Installation and Mission Support Center. Remain standing for the playing of the Air Force song and the departure of the official party. Today's ceremony. We invite you to join General Wolfenbarger in congratulating Major General Carter in the receiving line located in the main foyer. Thank you for attending and we wish you a pleasant day.